what's going on in train in your train world this week? I think I'd first like to talk about these things. What is it? So these are a very interesting part of a model railway that sometimes gets forgotten or ignored, and that's loads and wagons. Loads and wagons? Well, basically, oh, every... They're normally empty, aren't they? Yeah, wagons usually come empty, and there's many ways you can make scenery. Sometimes people crush up rocks themselves. Sometimes they make, like, little wooden boxes out of toothpicks and stuff. This is sort of a... Um... I would put an elephant if I had a train set. <laughs> you can do I'm that. I'm going to see an elephant in an open wagon. <laughs> an elephant load. Elephant load. I love I that. Would, be scale. <laughs> would it be oh. scale? Maybe, scale? Maybe it's elephant? an elephant statue. <laughs> but this um, so this is some iron stone. That iron is stone? Ma yeah, made so the st well the stone before iron, <laughs> yeah. and it is. Oh, we're going to the top cam. We might have a look. Let me just get this camera ready. First. Get the camera ready. You keep talking there, Finn. Yeah, yeah. So these little wag, these little loads, these are designed to go into Graham. Sorry. <laughs> Close the tongue. These are going Backman Branch Lines, uh, 24 ton hoppers, and it comes with four loads. So these can be put into four different wagons, which is very nice. Very nice. So and are they scale of... weight? Do we have to weigh them? I mean, we might. I think, I'm pretty sure they might be die cast. They've got a lot of weight to them. So it's not iron, is that what you're saying? No, I don't think it's, I don't think it's actual iron. Oh. Let's kick that up to the kettle. Oh, that's all right. The camera can come to you. Have there a look there, at that. There it is. Oh, that's right. Where are you going? Sorry, I thought we were, I thought we were on the top camera. No, no, we are. We definitely are. But just bring it down here because it's all fuzzy up there. Oh, yeah, there yeah, we yeah, go. Yeah. That's it. That, no, a bit further down. A bit further down. There you that's go. It. So yeah, as yeah, you can see, the, the detail, it's all made for little rocks. Well, not it's not actual little rocks, but it's all made to look like little rocks that would be in a... Where are you yeah. going with that camera? Hang on, hang on. I've, uh, I've, I've lost control uh, of it. I've lost control of it. <laughs> it's, uh, there we go. You ooh. can see it's made designed to look Dang. like it. So you've got all the different looking uh, scratches and all that that would be in an actual minerally rock, as well as a nice sheen to it. So it actually does look like unprocessed iron. That looks fantastic. I really mm. like the look of that. Yeah, I think these are really nice. Do they do them in N scale as well for small uh, wagons? I'm not sure if Graham Farish does. Pico does, and I do have quite a few of those for my uh, open wagons. But those are coal loads. So these are cast, aren't they? There's not yeah. actually individual stones. It no, this like is like individual stones. Yeah, it's cast, but a very high quality die cast. What's the bottom of it look like? Uh, flat. <laughs> oh, there you go. <laughs> That's not very interesting, is it? So there you go. It's that got is, a great side profile as well. That is awesome. So. That's a nice little touch to add to your layout if you don't already have it. So you don't that, even need to glue it in. The designs just sort of. So pop that on. is an iron stone. I'd have to glue it in on my train. Because <laughs> why it keeps going over the edge. Yeah. Because <laughs> <laughs> it bounce out how fast it goes. <laughs> so that is a cool little thing. The iron stone loads, 24 ton hoppers. That mm. is cool. Very cool. And that's from Barkman Brunch Line. Yes. Very nice. Awesome. What else have you got for us, Ben? So the next thing on the agenda is what I think is an essential for any model railway. This. This, it doesn't have to be a Pico, but I certainly, this is the one I use. It is a servicing cradle. So this little thing, take it out of the box so we can show you all. It's very simple, but very effective. Oh it my is... God, Marlon showed me one of these ones. I fell so in love with it. We've had these, we've had these. for a while. Yeah, so this, yeah. Mm. very simple. Just a few, three firm box, and sort of, and it's sort of, so you can put a loco facing upwards. Yeah. We do have a loco sitting on the side. Do you want me to get it for you? Yes, please. For the loco, we have... I can't the... tell which way it's supposed to go. Are we on the top cam? Now yeah. we are. <laughs> for loco, we just simply got uh, this one, which is a uh, 060 diesel hydraulic Sentinel shunter in port of Bristol Authority Blue. And to give you an example of how you'd use it, to sort of slot it in. Yeah, stick, like his, that. stick his head in there. Yeah. There you go. Now you can do all the underside laundering, underside maintenance duties, such as cleaning the wheels, or taking up the base keeper plate to clean the pickups, yep. or maybe even just taking removing the body, such as a lot so of people. So you would take this apart. Yeah, you take it apart using the cradle, because one of the important things is you need to remove the underside so you can take the body off. Yeah. Otherwise, you just sort of have to do it like this. Like it's really, it's really annoying. The cradle it means you have both hands free to use tools. And to remove and it's debris. not going to scratch or damage your loco, is it? Oh no, it's very soft foam, yeah. firm enough. It's that supple. 
firm enough that it won't damage the loco that it won't move the locomotive, but soft yeah. enough that it won't damage it. So you've got those loose end bits that yeah. can move back and forth just yeah. so you can support the yeah, yeah, so, right? Yeah, so if we you can move these closer together. Yep. So this sort what of like this the, bit there? That's so you can change the scale for to end gauge. Yeah, because it's narrower. Yeah, because narrow gauge obviously it's a lot smaller. So I, this is, I use this one for mine because I have model end gauge. So just have it. You need to actually look at this instead of the camera. <laughs> so as you can see, it's just put your end gauge loco in there and it'll yep. fit perfectly. You guys have got it sorted. And then I guess yeah. these ones, you spin them around this way so you can lock in your end gauge. Exactly. Inside. Exactly. So these two stoppers are for the ends and this one is for the sides. Of course, if you could do what I do and just sort of have, you don't even need to use them because the foam is firm enough that they can be either way and they'll still be nice and secure. Wow, there you go. That is lovely. Because there's nothing like... Oops, there's nothing like dropping oh a loco. Oh, my on, God. There's nothing like dropping a loco on a bench. I'm no, so good. sorry. <laughs> everything can be fixed. It's everything even in, can... it's even in the service cradle. Now. <laughs> <laughs> that's, why you have a, that's why you have a service yeah. cradle, to avoid that happening. Oh, so it's lovely. Yeah. Sorry. That's that. cool. That's fantastic. <laughs> well, that is your service cradle. Okay. <laughs> So we've got some more stuff, haven't we? The last thing I'm going to show you yes. these two points. Well, they do look exactly the same. One is SL95, as you can see, and one is SL E95. What does the E, e represent? Electro Frog. Ooh. So we can swap to the top. Are we still at the top cam? We can do that. So, as you can see, one has got the black text stating. That's my hand. Uh <laughs> hang on, hang on, hang on, hang on. Yeah, so one has got the black text saying intra frog, yep, and the other has the red text saying electro frog. Right, I don't see any frogs in that packet. <laughs> the frog indicates this bit here and this bit here. Oh, you can see quite different, yeah, quite, very different there, isn't it? Yeah, because these, this one as an intro frog is plastic, yeah, and therefore that separates the electricity of the track, they're not connected. That is useful because it makes wiring a lot simpler right but it means it creates what's known as a dead point right where this but this little bit here power right. cannot go to the locomotive right the locomotive with short wheel bases or insufficient pickups yeah will stall on it right electro frog is a lot better as yeah. it's got as you see it's metal the whole way yeah but that unfortunately means that since these are connected electronically it makes wiring a lot more difficult as instead of having a separate related which makes it a bit easier. You have to sort of figure out the wiring. Like, okay, all of this is live and connected, and that can be a little bit of a challenge. Right. But it does eliminate the dead spot. So this would be better for locomotives that are longer mm -hmm. and lot and uh, sorry for shorter, so for shunting layouts and all that, and simple layouts that weren't requiring a lot of electricity. Mm -hmm. Well, this one would be better for layouts which are larger and require a lot of electronics, but for locomotives that won't stall on it and will be running at high speeds. Mm -hmm. Is this to which one you use? That would be but, my one. Yeah. I simple. Take the, I take, it simple. I take the high speed one. It's basically the, which one you use based entirely on uh, con not consequences, on circumstances and context. Neither is better than the other. They're both just as useful in their own ways. Well, it's also personalities, right? Because Brett would be best suited to this, right? Yeah. You've got the dead spot. To get over the dead spot, you have to be a full power, right? So it'll be yeah, you have to you have to push. Throttle. You have to push the train has to go fast enough That's to get right. over. You'll be flying over that part just to get through. Be like a little speed help. Yeah. <laughs> you have to get the scale like the train that I catch over. Is that how it way? goes? Yeah. Well, in that case, I can't just... do that again. By the way, well, how you do that is you just make the tracks pretty far apart when you put them together. <laughs> that is fantastic. Awesome. Go. So that is a basic analogy of. Uh, insult frog and yep. electro frog yes that's it that is great news nice all right well thank you for those little tidbits well and done, fun. Ben. thank you very much for having me is there anything that fell on the floor before yes uh, <laughs>